every living thing you see around us is built with individual cells, regardless of whether it's the grass, the trees, pond scum, or your neighbor's dog. Each is built with individual cells. Those cells are microscopic, but they're there. You can think of them as being teeny tiny Legos. Just as we can build structures with Legos, living organisms are built by individual cells. And regardless of whether a cell is from a plant or an animal, they all have one big thing in common. Each has a blueprint or a set of instructions telling it how to structure itself, how to grow. Ultimately, it is the structure of an individual cell that determines how it functions. Catalonia, bullfighting is now outlawed. In the long, hot Spanish afternoon, the bull now arose. The men once again fear a behemoth, and he is real. With the drive and ambition of a man, and the strength and power of a bull. In 2012, when Sebastian Vettel won the Spanish Grand Prix, he did so in a vehicle designed for speed, not efficiency. This next concept is an important one. Let's take a moment to review some biology that you probably learned in the 7th or 8th grade. Mitosis. Mitosis is nothing more than a fancy word for cell division. It is almost exclusively how new cells form. Now let's look at how mitosis allows for growth in a common mammal, namely us, Homo sapiens. After fertilization of a gamete, or female egg, by a male sperm, a zygote forms. A zygote is a single cell that has the ability to grow into a fully functioning multicellular organism. Growth occurs through a fairly simple process of cellular division. Here you see one cell dividing into two. This process will repeat where two form into four, four into eight, eight into sixteen, sixteen into thirty-two, and so on and so on, until, in the case of humans, we have a fetus, a complex multicellular organism. Ultimately, the process of mitosis allows us to grow from one individual microscopic cell into a fully functional adult. Well, at least mostly functional adult, who is comprised of approximately 100 trillion cells. All of those 100 trillion cells were formed through the process of mitosis, and each has an exact copy of the DNA from that first individual cell. Just 60 years ago, two English scientists discovered DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA is the blueprint cells use to structure themselves, or another way of putting it is that cells use their own DNA to determine how to grow. You can think of DNA as being a set of instructions. Each cell has DNA in its nucleus, and the machinery in each cell follows the instruction of the DNA when building the cell. It's important to understand that every living thing has its own DNA code or sequence of instructions. So my DNA instructions are different than the DNA instructions of any other living organism, thus making me look and function in a unique manner. Everything that has ever lived has its own DNA sequence. Regardless of whether we're talking about an ant or an elephant, pond scum or a beautiful flower, a human or a Neanderthal, each has its own DNA sequence that determines how it is constructed. An organism's physical form determines how it functions. Human DNA has 3.2 billion instructions, and every cell has a full copy of all 3.2 billion instructions. That begs the question, how do cells in different parts of the body look different from each other? This is most easily understood by looking at a set of house plans. There are multiple pages to a house plan. On one page, you might find the framing plans for the first floor. On another, you might find the framing plans for the second floor. And on yet another, you might find the exterior plans. 
different pages contain different information and a contractor doesn't need to look at the entire plan to build just one room. Your cells do the same. Through a biochemical reaction, individual cells only read the information that is relevant to them, thus allowing cells to look dramatically different from one another. And much more importantly, it allows different cell types to function differently. This is a good thing. We certainly wouldn't want lung cells in our liver, or even worse, liver cells in our brain. You may be thinking I'm spending a lot of time on DNA structure and function when this video is supposed to be about cancer. However, if you understand the basics of DNA, you will easily understand what cancer is, how it grows, how it spreads, and why there are so many different types. Before we move on, it is important that you really think deeply about this principle. Structures are built based upon plans. This general premise is true for almost everything we see around us. Tonight, I'm camping with my boys. As I sit here in our camper and look around me, I see our refrigerator, stove, microwave, cabinets, and I know that literally everything around me was built based upon a detailed plan. Take a moment. Look around your surroundings. Regardless of whether it is the chair you're sitting in or the computer on which you're watching this video, almost everything around you was constructed based upon a plan. Now, here in southwestern Virginia, we have a strong heritage for building things. Whether it be textiles in Narrows, furniture in Galax, servo motors in Radford, automotive parts in Blacksburg, or trucks in Dublin. All of these things are built based upon a plan. Now take a moment and really think. What happens if there's a mistake in the plan? Today I'm at home and I'm sitting in my living room holding the actual plans that were used to build this house. My wife and I designed them. I would like for you to imagine for a moment that my wife and I made a mistake. We forgot to include this door on the plans. Now the contractor could have built the house without that door being there if the plans did not show the door. All he would have had to have done would have been to have built that room first and then construct this wall behind me without a door being there. Now surely you're saying that's not going to happen. The contractor is going to bring that to your attention and there are going to be changes made before there becomes a structural problem. And you're absolutely correct. However, today we're talking about what happens in your body on a cellular level. On a cellular level, the contractor, or what are called the ribosomes, they always follow the plan. So if in the event that there's a small mistake in the plans, then that small mistake is always going to be constructed or it's always going to be built. That can cause a cell to become non-functional. It causes the cell to look different. It causes the cell to function differently. And if in the event that the, that cell, and ultimately what's going to be cells because that cell will go through mitosis, that can cause an individual organ, such as the lungs, the liver, the pancreas, even the skin. It can cause that organ to malfunction. And if in the event that the organ malfunctions drastically enough, that can cause death. One of DNA's most basic functions is to regulate the rate at which cells divide. Cancer can simply be defined as unregulated cell growth due to DNA damage. 
It is very obvious when visually inspecting a neoplasm, or what is more commonly referred to as a tumor, that the tissue in the tumor is growing faster than the tissue around it. The tissue is distinctly different than the surrounding tissue because the cancerous tissue and the healthy tissue no longer share common DNA or a common blueprint. The cells that make up the tumor grow faster and divide more often than the healthy cells around them. Cancer can occur anywhere in the body, but all cancers have one thing in common. They were caused by a carcinogen. Carcinogens are cancer-causing agents. They can be chemicals, radiation, or viruses. According to the International Agency for Research on Cancer, known carcinogens include acetaldehyde, which comes from consuming alcoholic beverages, aflatoxins, aluminum production, asbestos, benzene, cadmium, coal, diesel exhaust, Epstein-Barr, and by the way, that is the virus that causes mono, ethanol, formaldehyde, both hepatitis B and C. Many of the 128 strains of the human papillomavirus, human T-cell lymphotrophic virus, ionizing radiation, Carposi sarcoma, which is caused by the herpes virus, in particular the HHV-8 strain of the virus, solar radiation, both smoking tobacco and using smokeless tobacco, UV radiation, and finally, vinyl chloride. Lastly, cancer can spread in the body via the circulatory system or via the lymphatic system. Cancer cells can be carried to other parts of the body where they can cause a new neoplasm or tumor to form. It is often the spreading of cancer to major organs that can cause death. Luckily, cancer is largely preventable through healthy lifestyle choices and frequent screenings.